Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Music Production Podcast. I'm your host, Brian Funk. And today I have a guest with me, and it's my second, second time guest, actually, uh, Tom Frampton. Tom Frampton is running the site masteringthemix.com, where they've got some really great plugins to help you um, fine tune your music and make it sound good when you actually release it. We'll get into some of those plugins in the show, but also an exciting new collaboration tool called Bounce Boss, which we'll definitely talk a lot about. So, um, Tom, good to see you again. Welcome back. Hey, Brian. Thanks so much for having me. It's great to see you. How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. It's been a lot. I think it's been almost a year since we spoke. And, um, oh, really? Wow. Yeah, and um, it's been nice to see uh, some of the stuff you're doing has really like grown and blossomed. I really love the charts you're doing for um, dissecting the songs. Uh, where you map oh, out thanks so all much. the different, yeah. and those are that's actually been an amazing learning curve for me as well. Mm -hmm. Like really diving into a song and trying to understand the different frequency and stereo placements. It it's just taught me so much, and it's it's really improved my mixes. Yeah, and people have been finding it very useful as well. So I've enjoyed doing those. I'm glad you have as well. I think it's super helpful because just so the people understand, and you'll see this in the show notes if you check it out. Um, it's kind of like a graph um, where on the bottom, I guess that'd be the x-axis, you've got like the panning. Mm -hmm. And then the y-axis is the frequency range. Yeah. And you're showing just where like the bass sits, where the drums sit. And then you see like all the other stuff placed around mm -hmm. it. And mm -hmm. it's just a great visual to um, understand how a mix gets balanced nicely. For sure. And when you, because I've done this now for around 10 songs and I'll be continuing to do it for a lot more songs in the future, you start to see a few patterns and you also start to see where people do things differently. Mm -hmm. And it's really helpful to kind of get inspiration for different genres on, on, you know, how a track is often mixed in hip hop and how it's often mixed in pop and how the two correlate and how, how you might use some influences from both approaches to get the best possible result for whatever you're working on. Hmm. So I've, I've found that super helpful. Have you found any unexpected surprises in any of the tracks you've dissected? Definitely. I would say that when I first started producing music, I was always told that kick and bass have to be absolutely pure mono. Mm -hmm. And what I've found more and more with these is that the kick is often pure mono, especially in the low frequencies below 200 hertz. And the bass just has a touch of stereo width to give it a bit more separation from the kick. And just that tiny little bit of stereo width, not enough to cause any kind of phase cancellation when you hear it in mono, but just enough to separate from the kick, really enhances the clarity of the low end. Mm. So this is something that I've now started to do it, uh, for, for my clients when I'm mixing and mastering their, their music. And it's been really beneficial to the sound for sure another one is that there is of, often when you have a track that has too wide low frequencies then phase cancellation is a huge problem and i have seen this in a couple of kind of major label releases where you wouldn't expect things to have serious technical issues so yeah it's very interesting to see to see these things hmm. would you say like the phase cancellation is more common in the lower frequencies than the higher because you know from your charts i can kind of see there's a lot more stereo spread as you go vertically up the graph the bass and kick start out real narrow and then it kind of mm -hmm. blossoms up definitely well if you think about the scale of an eq it's it's not linear it's, it's logarithmic so around the low end although it takes up about half of your eq more or less You've only got zero to 500 hertz there, whereas mm -hmm. above that, you've got 500 to about 20,000. So there's a lot more space going on there. So that's how I like to think of it. It's like the amount of space you've got to fit everything together. And when things are collapsed to mono, there's more chance of overlap there in the low frequencies. Mm -hmm. So yes, phase cancellation is much more common in the low end if you yeah. use those kind of stereo spread techniques. Right. And yeah, I'm actually looking at the EQ8 inside of Ableton Live right now. And 1K is a little bit to the right of the center of that chart, of that display, which mm -hmm. means there's 19,000. Yeah, right. Exactly. 19,000 other hertz to the right. Yeah. <laughs> and there's just 1,000 to the left. So yeah. there's so much space over there where yeah. 
you can. Well, uh, this is again, this is this was a big issue that we tried to rectify with our plugin levels. So we have a a vector scope, and you have a filter on the vector scope as well. So you can you can low pass everything from zero to whatever two hundred and fifty hertz. And we have this visual that shows you if there's frequencies kind of poking out too far, too wide. There's some there's some leeway in the center to allow for that kind of slight base width that I described earlier. But if things do start going outside of that visual and they start showing as red, then you've got problematic phase cancellation issues that you can then fix. So we have a quick solution for this now with levels, which is good. Mm. Yeah, and that is a really eye-opening plugin for anyone that hasn't seen it, um, where you can really get an understanding of what's actually happening in your tracks. <laughs> and that, that's kind of like, I guess, a theme of a lot of your work is um, kind of um, showing the truth of what's really going on and um, comparing Which things. You as, our, as, our, as our marketer, that's, that's so amazing. <laughs> yeah, showing the truth of what's going on. I completely agree. I think there is a lot of, uh, misunderstanding when it comes to music, just from a from a technical perspective, just from the idea of you know if things are louder then they sound better, which the music industry as a as a whole is trying to correct by including things like normalization on YouTube and Spotify, Apple Music. So this is really important, and as producers we should know more about it so that we're better equipped to to you know give our music to the listeners in its best possible form. That's something I wanted to talk to you about, and it kind of came through um, Bounce Boss, actually. But this whole idea of like level matching and um, the mm -hmm. uh, the idea, the concept, this like auditory illusion that we think things that are louder sound better. We get this; mm -hmm. we prefer it. Um, mm -hmm. And this is not only true in our final mixes, but even if we're putting a compressor on a track, for instance, and we're just listening mm -hmm. to that one single instrument. Mm -hmm. Just the fact that the compressor might be introducing extra makeup gain makes us think, oh, the compressor sounds great on this track. But yeah. really we're responding to the volume, not so much the actual function of the compressor, which is yep. to reduce the dynamic range of the mm -hmm. signal. And I, I think it's really cool that you've um, done some nice things to protect us from that, that you know, like you've got reference, for instance, um, where you get your reference track and you level match them so you know you're not getting any kind of um, false information based on where the volume slider is. Yeah. Um, but you've got that integrated nicely into Bounce Boss, and maybe that's a, a good chance for us to have you tell us a little bit about this new project sure. of yours, Bounce Boss. Well, I'll, I'll quickly kind of go over what Bounce Boss is, and then I'll talk about some of the features, level match being one of them. Mm -hmm. So, so what Bounce Boss is a collaboration platform, and it makes sending audio files and completing projects easier than ever. So, you can jump seamlessly between different versions. You can communicate your ideas effectively, keeping everything like files and comments in one place, and ensure that your music is always improving with every update from version one, two, three, four. So, I had this. I was. I've since I've been making plugins, I've been working with a lot of artists as well, mixing and mastering their music. And I was always super frustrated with the current solutions that were really slow, inconvenient, and just basically a fundamentally flawed way to collaborate. File sharing services, WeTransfer, Dropbox, Google Drive, those things, I, I would have my files being uploaded and sent through those kind of links. Then the comments through WhatsApp or through email, messaging, whatever, it was all mm. in different places. Right. So if I ever got to version two or three or four of a master, I would have no real idea of how it compared to you know previous versions and what had been discussed on those previous versions. For me to find that out, I'd have to dig out the different emails, fire up the different versions. And I was like, this is slowing me down so much. So I had the idea of taking the original mix version one, two, three, four, and being able to compare that as well to a reference on a streamable online platform and have all the comments as well, com like linked to all of the files, being able to loop a section and say, you know, the vocals should go up here. And then what version did, did that, you know, come on. When, when, when I look at how my clients were ex having this experience before, they'd have to open their email, download the file, open it in a DAW or in iTunes, 
then try and compare that to a previous version and how it had changed all the original mix. And there, were no, there was no simple way of doing this. So I was like, this has to be solved. This is a huge problem for a lot of people. So I started working on the idea, and uh, we released it in November of 2018. And it's been very warmly received. And it's also helping me a lot with all my collaborations, hmm. as well as all, as all of our customers as well. So yes, that's kind of Bounce Boss in a nutshell. Right. And I think one of the cool things that you're able to do with Bounce Boss is you've got this interface where you can just kind of click on the tab to get the different versions of the mix and just switch between them more or less instantaneously. This and is this was one of the big things. Yeah, exactly. So we wanted people, again, it comes down to knowing the truth of, of what is actually sounding good. So if you send a mix and you get the track mastered, you want to know that it's definitely sounding better. Mm. But obviously, with, with if, if it's, it's going to be a lot louder, and that can give you kind of the wrong idea that it sounds better just because it, that you think it sounds better, because the human ear perceives louder sounds to being richer in the low end with more clarity in the top end. So with Bounce Boss, you can, you can level match both tracks using um, R128 EBU recommendations so it, that everything gets level matched to 16 LUFs, to, 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 to minus 16 LUFs, uh, LUFs integrated. And you can switch seamlessly between the mix and the master. And you can live stream that from anywhere. So whether you're in your car, on the road, in the studio, mm. you can also stream it in high quality as well. So you can, you can absolutely pinpoint where the changes are, what the differences are in, in music. And the whole switching seamlessly between tracks as well is, is, is really important because it's hard to compare. If you're kind of halfway through the chorus of the master, you can't really just jump back to the start of the mix and then completely understand how things have changed. Yeah. You have to be able to jump seamlessly between the two tracks. And being able to do that between level lap match versions of version one, two, three, four, however many, makes you able, it enables you to make you know, quick, informed decisions about your track. So this is why people are finishing tracks and projects so much faster using Bounce Boss. Is this um, something you can do on the phone too? Yeah, you can stream it from your phone. Okay, it's not an app. It, it, it's still it's available it's the on as is on, on on the website. Yeah, mm. exactly. Okay, because this actually brings up something that I haven't thought of as a use for Bounce Boss. Just um, I like to listen to my mix on all kinds of systems. So mm -hmm. I'll go in the car. I'll go into the stereo system. I'll I'll put it on the laptop. I'll put it on just coming out of the phone speakers just to get yep. a sense of like because. As a high school teacher, I see a lot of kids listening to music just through their phone speakers. Exactly, very important. Yeah. Um, which kind of hurts me as a <laughs> as like a music engineer, yeah. or produ producer type sure. guy. I can imagine. But it's the facts, you know. That's that's, that's fact, what yeah. people are doing, and um, I could see this being a really use. And I didn't even think of this, but because you, th I'm thinking it more as a collaboration tool. But this would be great to like have three different versions of my mix, and then go Absolutely. in the car. And like you said, just let's listen to the chorus. How does this sound on each of these different tracks? Because the old way of doing it would be, all right, now let me play the next version of the song. Yeah. And like you said, now I'm getting like my palate sort of cleansed exactly. musically. And I can't really hear it straight comparison like mm. AB. The, really, the only way I've ever been able to do that was inside of a DAW and just by, you know, putting each version of the song on a track and then just comparing by muting and un unmuting. Mm -hmm. Well, with Bounce Boss as well, you know, you can create loops on each track. So for example, if you wanted to fire up three different versions plus as many reference tracks as you like, you can set different loop points on each of your reference tracks and the drop or the chorus, whatever, and then jump to your versions as well. You can level match them all. You can stream that as a high quality file. So yeah, for what you're talking about, this would be the perfect tool. Mm. Well, this is, a, this is definitely something that comes up a lot in my chats with people, especially like um, the Berkeley Online course I'm doing with, um, uh, you know, getting things to sound right. And am I processing this for good or am I just enjoying it because it's louder? Mm -hmm. And this solves a lot of those issues, I think, um, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. And I'm, I'm really happy that you've also like done so much to just put this information out there for people. You know, not even just to use the product, but just you're doing a lot of on your blog, you know, masteringthemix.com. There's a mm -hmm. lot of nice stuff out there for that. Um, 
I know we. we I like to share all this. If if I find something that's really working for me, and that's either helping me progress musically or helping my studio business progress, I love to share it mm. and have these discussions with people about why I feel it's better. And a lot of people are agreeing with me. There will always be people that, for example, just want things to sound as loud as possible, and that's mm-hmm. fine. If that's the sound they're going for, that's cool. And I will, I will, I'll, I'll explain to them why I feel that their music would be better off, you know, if it's punching harder, if it's, you know, it's going to get turned down on streaming platforms anyway, if they're going too loud. So why not make better use of the headroom and make a more dynamic track that people will probably enjoy more mm. rather than a crushed, you know, right? doesn't it? When, when, when you level match a super loud track to its dynamic counterpart, the dynamic version is often the one that wins. It's got a lot less distortion. It's a lot clearer. But when they're not level matched, the crushed, distorted version sounds, it, it, it kind of, it's, it's an effect that makes it sound like it's clearer, but mm-hmm. it, in reality, it's not. And when it's streamed back through YouTube or Spotify, that's when you're going to get, you know, the problems. The problems yeah. will become more clear. Yeah, it's true. I mean, you just get this sense that it's all there and it's that, and this is like the exact thing I think we try to do a lot in our music is play around with dynamics where, mm-hmm. um, you know, this loud, smashed, compressed track sounds powerful compared to the lower volume of the other track. But once you bring them together, now you don't have that dynamic change as much where you're hearing mm-hmm. like a quiet song compared to a loud song. Now they're both at the same yep. relative level and you can mm-hmm. get a sense for the movement in the music now, you still retain those dynamic changes from say the quiet part to the loud part mm-hmm. where that gets lost. Well, this in is something smashed. that we did in, um, yeah. this is something that we did in our latest plugin animate as well on the output yeah. slider. We've got a little arrow that points to the output gain adjustment that you should apply to match the gain, the, to, to, to match the input loudness before it touched any of animates effects. Mm-hmm. So, Animate, for example, let's take the Ignite section, which adds harmonic distortion, like frequency-specific harmonic distortion with mid-side precision. So, for example, you could take a bass part and add harmonic distortion from between 200 hertz to 400 hertz. Now, as you start firing that up, the, it's going to get louder because that's the nature of distortion. So the output slider arrow would then come down and show that you have to reduce the output by, let's say, 4 decibels. And so that way, and when you bypass the plugin, you'll hear exactly what the distortion is doing without having to add any, without actually adding any gain to the signal. So you're adding just the effect and not the gain. Mm. And when you start doing this with other plugins, like a compressor or like other EQs, you'll find that the changes that, that you're making are actually quite slight in comparison to the actual gain attenuation or, 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 or adding gain to the signal. Mm. I think that's a feature that should be on every plugin. I completely uh, agree. Every device. I think, yeah. I mean, even like an EQ, a, a simple EQ, you're you're playing with the volume. Like that's it's really what it is. It's a volume control mm-hmm. for specific frequencies yep. that you specify. But again, like you might just be turning it up. <laughs> it just yep. sounds nice because yep. it's louder and it sounds fuller or whatever mm-hmm. your, your effect you're going for. But to have that just um, kind of like automatic, intelligent control to just be like, all right, you just increase the overall volume of this by this much, mm-hmm. so lower it this much and compare yep. now. Yes, all of our future plugins will have that. And we're also looking to create like a plugin wrapper that will have that on as well. So yeah, this is it's something that we're really passionate about. Again, going back to what is actually truthfully making people's collaborations and music sound correct and as good as they possibly can Mm. without any kind of funny business (laughs) right (laughs) Uh, maybe i can ask you if we kind of spoke about this before we started but um maybe i can ask you to kind of take us through a little bit of like we got like luffs we got peak we got rms um what are we talking about when we throw those terms around i know like like for instance one thing um that happened in live somewhat recently is they changed the meters so that you can see the difference between the peak and the RMS. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the things that you've done with some of your plugins is to offer like this LUFS measurement, which I'm still wrapping my head around a little bit myself, but um, thanks to you, I think I have a better understanding of what it is, but maybe you can, maybe you got a nice way of wrapping it up and putting it simply for us. Okay, sure. So, I mean, let's start with LUFS. The the, the most common LUFS kind of uh, reading that people use is, that is the integrated for LUFS. Is, Sorry? is LUFS an acronym? Is this? Yes, it, it stands for loudness units, um, loudness units relative to full scale. Okay. Yeah. So integrated loudness tells you the perceived volume of the whole track. So when music was consumed mostly through radios, Labels used to release super loud music to grab listeners' attention. This was like really effective because louder music can appear to have richer bass and more clarity. However, when you push a track really loud, it's only achievable with heavy compression limiting, which sucks the life out of music. And that was known as the loudness war era. Right. Mm-hmm. So now times have changed. People consume music mostly through streaming platforms and they level match the audio. So they do this so the consumer doesn't have to continually reach for the volume control. Spotify, for example, normalizes all tracks to stream at around minus 14 LUFs. YouTube is minus 13. So a super loud track at minus six LUFs on Spotify would have the same perceived loudness as a more dynamic track at minus 12 LUFs. However, the dynamic track would have more natural transients and would most likely be more enjoyable to listen to. So, like for example, with Bounce Boss, you can keep an eye on the loudness of the music. You have the the integrated loudness reading in the top right corner of the waveform on the user interface. So, if your track is going to be released on a streaming site, you might choose to aim for no louder than minus twelve lufs to make sure you have enough punch going on because it's going to get turned down anyway. Mm-hmm. So that's integrated loudness. The another um, measurement with lufs is short term, which is rather than looking at the entire file we're looking at a a three second window moving across as the track is being played so it counts for the last three seconds so again it's just very focused on how the human ear perceives loudness Mm -hmm. it's very similar to rms but this is a more accurate understanding again of how the human ear perceives loudness Hmm. yeah so you're referring to the loudness wars as if they have ended are you are you seeing that? Is this is the loudness wars exist only in the minds of people. <laughs> That's how I see it. Because okay. the way the music is being delivered, <laughs> right. there is no reason for that. There, there, there yeah. is no reason to try and push music to be as loud as possible. If you look at some of the biggest hits in recent years, hits like Daft Punk, Get Lucky, and Uptown Funk, these aren't loud songs. Mm-hmm. There are some loud songs that have still gained a lot of traction, but they've been turned down. By like by a lot on streaming platforms, so I'm not saying they would have been more successful if they were more dynamic. All I'm saying is that their audio quality could have been improved. Those are two good examples of songs that really breathe when you listen yeah, to them. Yeah, exactly. You, know? you can hear the transients. You can even see the transients in the waveform mm-hmm. of both of those songs, and they were created by some of the, you know highest regarded engineers on the planet who really know what they're doing Mm -hmm. yeah that's um that's that's interesting because like you said with the waveform too you can especially when things get uploaded to soundcloud and you can see it Mm -hmm. um sometimes it's just a brick it looks like almost a straight bar yeah (laughs) but other times it's got this nice up and down which um is really where a lot of um emotion and feeling and music comes from from these Absolutely. changes so that's refreshing to hear you um in a way if not uh proclaim the end of the loudness wars at least the um end of the point of the loudness wars <laughs> yeah the, uh, that is it yeah it's the end of the point of the loudness wars now mm-hmm. it's just about making people more aware of this and right. and helping them make better sounding music there's still pressure from record from from there is pressure from record labels because they, and th- this was a big part of Bounce Boss as well. I want people to be able to send the music and and have level match engaged so that they don't have that misunderstanding that the louder is that louder is better. They can make true yeah. decisions based on how people will actually experience music. And that previously wasn't available. If you send someone a Dropbox link and they fire it up in their iTunes and they start comparing it, 
you know, they are they are going to make decisions saying we need this louder. It does right. happen. So this one of one of the reasons why we created Bounce Boss was to create that interface to make it much easier for people that were decision makers in music to help them make better decisions. Hmm. Yeah, and you're kind of doing what the streaming service is going to do anyway, which is exactly kind of match. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a great feature. And um, again, like same thing with the plugins. I think it's an important one. It, mm -hmm. it really gives us, you know, producers a better understanding of what's really happening. And that's so mm -hmm. important to know what's really happening in your music. Um, yeah. Whether it's putting a reference track in your mix and just going back to a song, comparing your music to a song that you like the sound of, but you also have to keep in mind this has also been processed. And mm -hmm. so it's very, very cool stuff. Um, I'm, I think it's going to help a lot of people. I'm sure you've seen it already has, you know, take it. Definitely. People. Yeah. Um, so let's see. Um, let me ask you this as a podcast, is there any special, um, you know, if I say I throw in, um, levels on here and I'm looking for my proper Luffs level, is this uh same deal? Like kind of like around like 13, negative 13. Is, is it be around different for that, that kind of word? level? It's a bit difficult because we are just spoken voices as opposed to a whole arrangement, a whole song. Yeah. So it can be a, a bit different, but just a normal, like a, a voiceover on YouTube, for example, that's going to stream around minus 13 luffs. Mm -hmm. You know, you might have a bit of background music there as well. For a podcast, anything between minus, minus 12 to minus 16, I would say is a good window. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's good to know. And I'm sure there's a lot of people, <laughs> well, there's probably a lot of people producing like you said, voiceovers or just even maybe spoken word parts in their music, you know. Well, let's do this then. When we when we put the audio together for the podcast, we'll run it through um, my audio quality control application, Expose. It will analyze the file in three seconds and will tell us the integrated LUFs. Uh -huh. And so we can then tweak the gain. So these listeners will now be listening to a perfectly tweaked audio at minus 13 luffs and they can make the decision on how it sounds. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. Might expose some errors in the previous episodes. <laughs> oh, perhaps, perhaps. <laughs> That's fine. That's how we learn, right? That's how we yeah, grow. Yeah. We, we uh, reflect and we change course where needed. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I know we're, we're getting short on time. Um, Anything else, any place you want to point people to? I think your your site is a great resource. Even if, you know, I don't, I don't want it to feel like a sales pitch. I mean, even if they're just going for the information you have on the site, some of these um, these analyses, analyses of the songs are super helpful. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of really, sure. really great yeah. tutorials going on. Um, Thank any, you. Any, well, uh, with Mastering the Mix, yeah, if, yeah. if people want to go and grab what I would recommend is that they sign up to our emailing list, which will automatically send them the free trials of our plugins. And with the free trials of our plugins come lots of free eBooks that will help them mix and master to a really high standard. Mm -hmm. so, and they're totally free, no obligation. And once they're signed up, they'll get, all, they'll get a decoding the mix blog pretty often. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot to be gained from um, going and checking that out. And if people want to collaborate more efficiently and send files like a boss, then head over to <laughs> bounceboss.co.uk, grab a free trial from there as well. And if you want to listen to your songs, as we discussed earlier, kind of in different environments, in the car, on the road, you know, in the studio, and compare how they sound to reference tracks in a level matched environment, then, yep, there's a great solution for that. I think that feature alone is forget collaborating even yeah <laughs> um honestly that's like a really useful feature to be able to uh -huh. just switch between sections while i'm in the car you know when i'm because mm -hmm. you know that's probably where i listen to most of my music really is mm -hmm. in the car um and then maybe it's like sitting at this desk you know but sure. um the car is a more realistic representation of what the average person would be listening to. They're not coming mm -hmm. into my studio where I've yeah. made the track sound great here. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, so it's nice. I think that's a great feature of the cool. system. And it's pretty cool too that you, um, you, if I understand correct, the people you're collaborating with don't need to be um, signed up for Bounce Boss or anything, right? They just 
That's correct. So, for example, if you've got a, a free trial or a paid account, everything that you send or receive, you know, people can upload files to your Bounce Boss account if you send them a link. You can send files to anyone. They don't need a paid account. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I can so see it's that not like in the way, yeah. Bounce Boss paid subscribers only. No, it's not yeah. like that. Yeah, because yeah. well, that that's was... not the nature of collaboration. So right. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a cool tool. Um, maybe we can offer everyone a little challenge, myself included, is try some collaboration. It, it's a fifteen-day trial or two-week trial. It's fifteen something. days, and if you create, if you send files or create a project, that extends to thirty days. Hmm. So maybe look at that as a deadline. Collaborate with someone this month. Uh, <laughs> yeah, try, try it out. You know, um, yeah. you know, you go into your contact your friends or or go online and write collab bro <laughs> question mark <laughs> and uh, see what see what um you can come up with um i think that's uh that's something i'd like to do more of that i i don't do much of at all really um mm -hmm. and something like this makes it nice yeah. and easy well i mean as a as a mixing and mastering engineer i can say i i, I collaborate with a lot of people and i learn something from every single project mm. these people are so talented in their own way and you can learn something from everyone whether yeah. it's a sick bass line or a synth patched to perfection an amazing groove amazing mix you know collaborating with people is like traveling it just broadens your perspective and just it will bring so much more inspiration to your individual writing sessions as well mm. yeah i couldn't agree more mm. and you know as a musician done ton of it but um as a producer much less and uh, i think sure. uh, that would be a smart thing for me myself to play around with more experiment with more i love that analogy that it's like traveling it's uh very true mm -hmm. well cool man i appreciate you taking the time again and sharing some of your work and also just these studies you're doing which are no doubt very time consuming um, but to to see the way you break down these tracks and into their separate parts into how they're mixed and panned and it's it's really helpful for me. I, I really enjoy that, and I think uh, lots of people are getting a lot out of it. So thank Great. you for that. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me, and it's always a pleasure chatting with you, Brian. Yeah. Well, we'll have to do it again. You know, keep me posted must, on what's going must. on, and uh, yeah. we'll touch base again. Cool. Thanks, dude. Cool. And thank you, everyone, for listening. Um, head over to masteringthemix.com, and also it's bounceboss.co.uk, right? Yes. Correct. Awesome. I, I thought I was going to forget that. Yeah. <laughs> um, cool. So, yeah, thanks everyone for listening. Check it out and have a great day.